Marina Abramovich, The Artist is Present, is a 2012 documentary directed by Matthew Akers. The film follows the performance artist Marina Abramovich going through her work and the lead up to her exhibition in the Museum of Modern Art, New York, in 2010. Here showed archived work of hers, other performance artists recreating her work, and finally the new work, The Artist is Present, which showed Marina sat across from members of the public staring into their eyes, saying nothing. This happened over the period of seven and a half hours a day for three months. Now, before getting into the way this documentary works, let's go over performance art. So what is performance art? In a nutshell, evolving from the 1960s, performance art gave an active movement to static art, this creating a conversation about what is art and what is performance. Performance art is typically the use of the body as the artwork. An artist will be present in the space portraying a work, for example, Yoko Ono's 1933 performance titled Cut Piece. Here Ono would sit dressed up with scissors placed in front of her audience members could then cut her clothing, whatever they wanted to do. The power was in their hands. Now this documentary follows one of the most iconic performers, Marina Bromovich. Bromovich is a Serbian performance artist born November 1946. A lot of her work evolving from the 1970s Abramovich made works such as Rhythmo, 1974, where Abramovich stood behind a table of different items. She had the instructions which stated, there are 72 objects on the table that one can use on me as desired. Performance, I am the object. During this period, I take full responsibility. These had objects like cake all the way up to a loaded gun. As quoted from Abramovich, the experience I drew from this work was that in your own performance you can go very far, but if you leave a decision to the public, you can be killed. Another performance she done is the 2005 performance named Seven Easy Pieces at the Guggenheim Museum. Here she recreated performance art pieces from the 60s and 70s. These are referenced in the documentary through the use of archive footage. So regarding the artist is present, if we take a look at Bill Nicole's modes of documentary filmmaking, it comes under observational. Although the audience know they are being filmed, these audience members are being observed as they engage with Marina. For the general structure of the documentary, it's generally a standard one. This is where the critics of the documentary comment as the feedback it tended to have was that the documentary was just standard. However, it has this performative aspect due to the involvement you get as an audience in this art world. As quoted in Nicole's introduction to documentary, they share a strong emphasis on what it feels like to inhabit the world in a specific way or as part of a, of a specific subculture, this subculture being the art world. Narratively, we start the film in media res, with fast-paced shots of Abramovich getting ready for the exhibition, getting her photo shoots, the hectic life reflected in the fast train, the quick place editing, the shots of the exhibition, the busy crowd, the popularity of the exhibit, before jumping back to six months before the show. Generally, we are seeing a typical structure, sort of toller off beginning, middle and end. After this jump back, the story shows Abramovich's life from birth and her upbringing, then we hear more about the exhibition, to then end with the crowd loving her work and applauding, ending the documentary in a state of equilibrium. From the film starting with her reaction of people calling her a witch, ending with a massive crowd applauding her work. One of the reviews of this documentary film stated, Matthew Akers, Marina Abramovich, The Artist is Present, is an illuminating documentary on a gifted, invented visual performer. No, the film doesn't take the kind of risk the artist is known for, but it's by large an enjoyable time despite its somewhat meek delivery. I'd however disagree. With this outlook on the film, I felt it drew watchers in, and if a viewer hadn't heard of Abramovich, or didn't know much about performance art at all, it gives them a clearer insight and can open them up to the art form. 
Making the documentary abstract to reflect her work, I feel, would make it another level complicated that wouldn't be necessary. I believe the documentary opens you up to her work and creates interest to viewers. What I find quite interesting with the piece is you see the character of, of Abramovich. We get these moments that juxtapose to the discipline she has with her performance and the viewer gets to connect with her. As we are analysing this documentary, it's normal to refer to people in the piece as characters. Marina Abramovich is a real person, but just as you would describe Michael Moore or Louis Theroux, it's edited and changed to fit the film you're watching. As Klaus refers in the film, you fall in love with Marina. Marina seduces everybody she ever meets. But that's not the case for me because I went through that process and now we are divorced. We are great friends, but we are divorced. So she would never try to seduce me because we are divorced. It's bits like when the director leaves in after she speaks, referring to how she was sick. She states, there is my monologue. Today, actually, with a smile through the all night on my face, <laughs> like idiot. Anyway, there I am. I think red is very good here because I always think that red gives strength. So if I have red color, red bed sheets, red shawl, red pyjama, red oranges, I, I maybe get better soon. Okay. What's my model? You laugh with her, and this creates this down-to-earth feel about her character throughout this. The reading of her manifesto intrigued me, the way the artist is linking her personal life, and a great way to link the next part of the narrative of the documentary. Artists should avoid falling in love with another artist. An artist should avoid falling in love with another artist. An artist should fall avoid to falling in love with another artist. An artist should avoid falling in love with another artist. We then get this narrative with her ex-lover, Yulai, in which they hadn't seen each other for 12 whole years. We observe their first meeting and we feel awkward as a viewer, but then we get to know their relationship. We are taken through their roles in their relationship of their traditional gender roles. All their works they had done together their fasting as they sat across from each other days on end after Eli sitting for 13 to 14 days, Marina continued. The relationship was over. To end this, they walked from each end of the Great Wall of China, meeting in the middle to say goodbye. We get a few clips of the outrage Marina sparks, like a clip from Fox News, confused at the whole art aspect of it, questioning if it is art. We see crowds and crowds of people waiting to see Marina, to sit across from her, waiting days, getting up to queue at five, coming out of the gallery when it closes to just queue up again already for the next day. Why is this connection? They aren't speaking. What is this art? Then Yulai walks in, sits down, and Marina looks up.
feel a sense of, wow, this is what it's all about. They just stare at each other and finish with hands holding as he gets up and everyone applauds. They were applauding after each person, so I don't know if the audience knew of their relationship. When we see montages and close-ups of Marina's eyes crying, or her laughing, we feel and we understand what this is all about. We feel connected. We feel we don't need dialogue. For anyone who didn't understand the artist's present, this part just opens you up and you feel the connection. The documentary ends questioning the rock star question. As the crowd claps for Marina, as she stands on the final day of the exhibition, three months, seven and a half hours, six days a week, it fades to black.